Are you a fish? You what? You're in my net. Are you a fish? Or are you a thief? I'm not sure the context helps, to be honest. This is the Andor trailer, and it comes with everything you'd expect from a Disney Star Wars show. We've got modern day AKs and a galaxy far, far away in a time long, long ago. The type B of power who will absolutely, definitely act like a woman. And someone who will no doubt be perfect, amazing at everything, and humiliate Cassian Andor, even though he's supposed to be the main character. We're starting not to notice. I need all the heroes I can get. For That's two aliens, one person I can't see because it's too dark, and three powerful Type Bs. These are the heroes he wants, and honestly, I just wish Thanos could click his fingers again. But this is Disney, an entertainment company, who only hire talented people, classy people, who know that they shouldn't put themselves into the work, who through their wide variety of opinions can create a multitude of programming that absolutely don't reek of the same stuff all the time. Yeah, they've only got to make Riot Police the evil empire, which doesn't make sense because they're not supposed to be the good guys. They don't care whether you live or die. That's why this guy would have just been shot in the face. And this one. It's not an allegory. It's just applicable. That one probably should have been an allegory. Also, I have no idea how a clip from the new Predator movie got in here. I always find tiny women are renowned for their martial combat ability, but the script really hits a crescendo moment with this beauty. There's fermenting out there, so pockets of fermenting. What would have made sense is rebellion is fermenting out there, or the peasants are revolting. My pockets are fermenting. That doesn't refer to what you think it does. No, it just sounds like you've got a few grapes, left them in your pocket, and they've rotted. Sir, I don't know what's happened, but my genes are disgusting. As long as everyone thinks I'm an irritation. Well, you're already achieving that one for me, love. There's a good chance they'll miss what I'm really doing. I live in hope, but the question of quality is at the forefront of people's minds. I really like the soundtrack. I think it makes it feel probably more epic than it actually deserves. But for the rest of it, how Star Wars did it feel? I think that's very hit and miss. The spaceships seem to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to recognizably Star Wars. Because without the spaceship scenes, you have scenes like this and this and others on the entirely different side of the scale. Overall, does the trailer look better than Kenobi did? Yes. That's also not a high bar, but yes. The issue for me is the red flags are all over the place, and as it's Disney Star Wars, they don't have the benefit of the doubt anymore. So when you hear script writing, which is just awful, you already know what to expect. Are you a fish? Pockets are fermenting. Because the same people that write that script and work for Disney will also inevitably add in all the old tropes which have been done to death before, and were just awful ideas to begin with, even if they were original. And if you think that's a baseless assumption, oh no, from Bounding Into Comics, we get Fiona Shaw describe series and or as a great scurrilous take on the Trumpian world. The showrunner has created a whole new morality. And there's a world for a whole new morality. Evil. For instance, it's not surprising that Tony Gilroy has taken on a Star Wars project of his own. But he's also admitted elsewhere that he has no interest in Star Wars, and he thinks that helped. I always think that the best way to properly adapt an IP is to literally not care about it at all, and not care about what you change. Yeah, we're just going to destroy everything. That's probably for the best. Should it be Star Wars? No. What I think we should do is delve into the political machinations of the Empire in full swing. Specifically, so the result can be something with a considerable contemporary resonance. Tony has written a great, scurrilous take on the Trumpian world, said Fiona Shaw. Our world, meaning the real world, not Star Wars, which is what she should be talking about, is exploding in different places right now. People's rights are disappearing, and Andor reflects that. The Empire is taking over, and it feels like the same thing is happening in reality too. Look, love, I don't know if you actually understand how reality works, but he's not even in power right now. Literally, the most he could do to you is delay your order in McDonald's because he's taking a burger up. Is that what he did? Is that- I'm sorry if you've suffered. I'm sorry if you've suffered and that made you shake in your boots, but seriously, can we get back to talking about Star Wars, please? The show will show the efforts undertaken by the rising rebels to fight back against Palpatine's regime. I was impressed by Tony's social realist intentions. He created a whole new morality. It's very deep and humane. It's a full-on drama. Ambitious, dark, and real. As he was pitching at me, I was like, this is amazing. You are sick. Tony has invented an entirely new morality, and it makes him seem dark and sick. Oh, I can't wait for this one. What you've managed to do is invent evil, think it reflects the real world, and don't understand who's in power. This sounds like a masterpiece in the making, doesn't it? We've definitely put our top people on this one. And you can see that Empire fully stands behind Andor and the masterpiece that it is when they shoved it in their House of the Dragon issue. <laughs>
But don't worry, no, I'm sure despite the fact that the train is obviously left the tracks and is driving at the moment headfirst off a cliff, this is definitely going to be good. Because if it's nothing else, if it's nothing else, at least it's going to be Star Wars. It's going to be more Star Wars, and we all love more Star Wars. Just consume, folks. Just consume. You know, just consume the fact that what everything you know about Star Wars is wrong. At least if there's one thing we can say about Star Wars, it's that it absolutely won't respect the canon, and that's what everybody wants. Because the showrunner, Tony Gilroy, is very paranoid as he goes around the world. And let's face it, given his comments, I could have told you that myself. This is a guy who probably checks underneath his bed every night in case someone's hiding there with a spray tan. Although there is a bright side to this entire disaster for me, and it's not just that I get to review it the first time. Oh no, they're making a second series of it as well. Twice the disaster, twice the fun. That's what we do on this channel. What's happening on the screen will be a disaster. And you can tell that because nobody on the cast can stop talking about the real world when they're trying to talk about Star Wars. These are people who are self-obsessed. Their egos are what matter to them. Star Wars, that's kind of an afterthought. Star Wars is simply the vehicle they can use to force their ideas down your gullets. That's why we get Luna emphasizes the show will also be about the transformation of a fearful man. I believe science fiction and stories that happen in a galaxy far, far away are a great tool to comment about our world. We need to explore the revolutionary way that we, personally, can become to change things to make the world a livable place. I think it can inspire a lot of people on how much you can do by yourself. The show wants to inspire people to be activists and revolutionaries. Congratulations, you can't even make your own bed, but now we're going to fix the world? You know, he's been fighting since he was a child. You certainly know he's been an assassin. He kills an ally in the very first scene. He's morally complicated in a dark way. It's the journey of a migrant, which is everything I come from. And Andor is about taking someone who's really anti-revolution and turning them into the most passionate person who's going to give themselves to save the galaxy. That is the story of a Trumpian world. What I really love about my sci-fi shows set in a different galaxy to me in a different time period is if only the people with an IQ about room temperature can please educate me on a political system of a country that I'm not even part of. Oh, please, if you could market your sci-fi show about space and aliens by telling telling me how it's trying to transform everybody who watches it into an activist. That's definitely going to get me interested. I just want to throw my wallet at the screen. The egotism, the arrogance is unrivaled, and that's why they go and make a prequel in the first place, because that allows them to insinuate themselves into a piece of work which they didn't earn and don't deserve, and it allows them to change the story. So they become an innate, integral part of that story, so they get the glory of the IP without actually needing to do any of the work or provide any of the quality. This is why prequels are so common and why everyone is obsessed with changing them. They can't just do a story somewhere, you know, a little minor one that doesn't really affect anything. No, now everything has to be a canon-changing, canon-breaking story. But I think Andor's the first one that goes, no, we're not breaking canon. You just don't know the canon. You don't understand it. You got the canon wrong. Or at least you did when I wrote the script last week. There are certain events that happen in these five years that are important and need to be paid attention to. There are certain people, characters, that the audience the passionate audience really feels like they have an understanding of and know. In some cases, they're right. In some cases, what we're saying is, what you know, what you've been told, what you've been telling each other is really wrong. I mean, it wasn't wrong until I wrote the script a week ago, but now I have. Everything you know about the universe is wrong. And I'm right, because I went and wrote it that way. I mean, it wasn't wrong two weeks ago, but it is now, and it always has been, because I can retroactively change the past and everything you believe. And if you don't believe me, <laughs> well, you just don't know Star Wars. It's upside down, it's Star Wars, or it's the opposite of what you thought was true, or it's way more interesting than you would ever thought. That's, That's right. right, this guy can make everything you know far more interesting. He's not arrogant. He just doesn't have the intelligence to realize his own limits of his capacity, or that of a lie, and there's a reason for it. I would say there's some surprises in store. I mean, for me, the biggest surprise with Andor would be if it actually turned out to be good within just a few episodes. He predicts O'Reilly's character will become unforgettable, even for casual viewers.
I bet that when episode 104 plays, when Mamotha finishes the episode, there'll be people tweeting about Mamotha. When Obi-Wan Kenobi happened, people tweeted because he held his lightsaber horizontally. Seriously, I wouldn't judge quality by whether people tweet about it. We're not exactly talking about people with the highest of standards. He wants to expand the audience past Star Wars fans, and he's going to do that presumably by not making it Star Wars. The really passionate Star Wars community, all those people have a lot of people in their lives that are Star Wars hesitant, Star Wars averse, or Star Wars reluctant. I mean, at the moment, that actually just describes Star Wars fans. Their roommate, their husband, the guy at work or whatever. My goal is to make her like, I have to see the next episode. And we're going to do that by making it not Star Wars, contradicting Star Wars canon, changing Star Wars canon and telling you that you got it wrong all along. Oh, and also it's just going to be a commentary about the real world and our own personal delusions. It sounds like a laugh a minute. I can't believe this won't be entertaining. Except it's not surprising because I'm not surprised that people that work for Disney don't understand that literally no one cares about their beliefs about the world. And actually, they have the worst beliefs about the world and should, if they had any intelligence, shut up about them. You're trying to make entertainment. You're trying to talk about a galaxy far, far away. And yet the only thing that you can talk about in your obsessive delusions is the real world. About how you want to convert people in the real world. About how we can learn something about your show with magicians in it. Now, if I was trying to learn about PR, specifically how not to do it, then this would be a perfect sample of literature. But for how to actually make a show which entertains the widest variety of people, then uh, I'm sorry you failed about that. Why? Because you've made it from one position in America, and it's going out to an international audience, like mine. So not only do you annoy most of the population over there, but you also annoy everybody else in the entire world. Congratulations, I don't know if mathematics is your strong point, but I feel like you've excluded more people than ever before. So no, I don't think you've made a whole new morality. What I think is you've invented hitherto unknown levels of ignorance that nobody thought was possible to reach. But if there's one thing I'm never surprised by, it's the egos and the depths of depravity that Disney can sink to. So congratulations, Andor. You made a trailer which drew a lot of people in. It's got a lot of red flags, but they were willing to ignore ignore it. And then the people who make the show couldn't keep their mouths closed and showed everybody what they're truly like when the mask falls from their face. You may be part of a whole new morality, but quite frankly, it's one I find repulsive. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe. More videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.